Good morning, and welcome to episode 132 of Getting Rich. I'm your host, Rich Checkin, President of Asset Strategies International, and today is Wednesday, July 19th, 2023. Yesterday saw gold prices rise to two and a half month highs, while silver prices surged to nine week highs. Many are looking to the weaker than expected increase in retail sales yesterday, up 0.2% month on month versus a half a percent that was anticipated. That coupled with the strong labor market are giving some folks encouragement that maybe, just maybe, the Fed will not increase interest rates next week at their Federal Open Market Committee meeting for July. They're hoping that they'll continue the pause. uh, And we all know that whether they raise rates or not, there's only a, a couple more bullets left in the chamber and they can't go much further than they have already. They've already signaled that they're only looking at two more interest rate Uh, increases, but a lot of folks are encouraged that we might be done already if uh, we're we're witnessing a soft landing. I've got some other views as to why gold and silver were surging, but first let's take a look at the prices which are considerably up from last week. First off, gold is at $1,974.20 an ounce this morning. That's up 2% from last week's price of $1,935.20. Silver, the big winner this past week, was up 7.8% to $25.08 this morning versus $23.27 last week. Platinum was up 4.5% to $9.89 an ounce from $9.46 an ounce last week. And palladium was up 2.5% to $1,328 versus $1,295 last week. As you can imagine, with silver vastly outpacing gold, the gold-silver ratio has come down to some of the lowest levels we've seen in some time. Uh, It clocks in this morning at 78.99 versus 83.48 last week. And the U.S. uh, dollar index uh, is down to 100.17 from 101.49. And that's where I want to look for the answer to the rise in gold and silver prices. You know, that U.S. dollar index is a relative uh, weighting uh, of various currencies versus the dollar and uh, see how the dollar stacks up against them. Those currencies are the Canadian dollar, the British pound, the euro, the Swiss franc, the Swedish kroner, and the Japanese yen. And you know what happened last year. Uh, For the first nine months of the year, the dollar was strong and gold was weaker. So we saw the dollar rise up to about 116 on the index last year, and then it lost all of that down to about 103, 104 on the index in just the last three months, and that's where gold surged and finished flat for the year. This year, uh, gold was only up about 5.5% as of the end of last week. It's up a bit more now. Of course, silver's up too. Uh, The story here is the U.S. dollar index continues to fall. I've said this before. I don't don't think the U.S. dollar is looking like a strong currency. It spent a few days down below the 100 level and just surged overnight to 100.17. I think what's going on here is we're seeing a combination of the weaponization of the U.S. dollar along with the debt ceiling debacle and how that was actually not handled, just kicked forward into the future, um, and the potential of other major currencies having an interest rate in, uh, differential that's favorable versus the U.S. dollar going forward. You put all that together and there's a lot of pressure on the U.S. dollar downward, and that typically signals positive Uh, movement for gold and silver prices. I think that's where uh, this rally is coming from. And I think it can be sustained, uh, even though uh, in the summer months we tend not to see it. Uh, Right now the dollar is dictating that metals prices should be higher. As always, I'd like you to go ahead and uh, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us, send us your comments and questions, subscribe to our social media, our monthly newsletter, and our twice-weekly alerts. But whatever you do, don't ever forget that getting rich starts with keeping what's yours.